Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2023 Mazda 3 Premium. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. Now, I'm filming this video in mid-January in Pennsylvania, and it's almost 60 degrees outside, which is crazy. This never happens. I have no idea what's going on. Either global warming is way more of a threat than we realize, or Jesus is coming back like tomorrow. Well, I guess you wouldn't be watching this video if Jesus comes back tomorrow because this is probably gonna come out sometime in mid-February. Maybe Jesus will come back the day after you watch this video. That'd be pretty cool. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Lancaster Mazda for allowing me to borrow this car to review. For all your Mazda needs in the Lancaster area, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. The previous generation of the Mazda 3 was often looked at as a simple A to B college student car. Ask me how I know. How do you know? Oh, because a lot of my friends at college have older Mazda 3s. For a long time, that was the reputation of the car, until this generation was unveiled a couple of years ago. And it surprised a lot of people with how sleek, angular, and futuristic it looked. Starting out up front on this Mazda 3, you'll have full LED headlights with these really neat daytime running lights incorporated into the headlight housing. And while this body style is a few years old at this point, I still think it is just as sharp looking as it was when it was first unveiled. Starting out up front here, you'll have full LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and then this maintains Mazda's corporate front end look while still being very distinct in its own styling. One of the other things I'd like to mention on the front end here is the Mazda logo, which is not just a badge, it's also a sensor for the safety system that is incorporated into this particular car. Moving underneath the hood in the Mazda 3 Premium, this is powered by a Sky Active 2.5 liter inline four cylinder, which is turbocharged and delivers 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. And that is paired to a six speed automatic transmission. Moving to the profile of this Mazda 3, if we move down here to the wheels and tires and we start there, this has 215 45R tires around these blacked out 18 inch wheels. I think the design for these is fantastic. And if we move up here to the mirror, it is body colored with a turn signal indicator implemented into it. And then it does have blind spot monitoring as well on this premium trim. Then down here, you will have keyless entry. And if we move to the back here, I actually personally really like uh, the back design. I didn't at first, Thought it was a little wonky, but the more I saw these, uh, I really think it's a cool hot hatch. And I would say this is a hot hatch. I think it's a really neat design. As we come around here to the back, you'll see um, two exhaust outlets. So dual exhaust is really nice. Then Mazda 3 all wheel drive and the Sky Active G engine badge. Then you will have your backup camera right there. And there is a button to open the lift gate. Moving in here, you have a pretty decent amount of storage, as you can see, since this is a brand new car. There is a uh, lot of floor mats and everything in here. Now, you can lift this up for a spare tire down there. Not a full size, but it is a nice little donut. And these, the second row seats do fold down. There's latches right there. Though, um, this little cargo um, hider is, is on this particularly right now. So that's going to... Uh, hide and obscure any cargo you have in there from thieves. Whoops, hold on. I want to open this up one more time just to talk about one last thing. Um, there is a button to lock the car. So let's say you're done uh, and you're leaving. You just tap that, lock it, and you have locked your Mazda 3 and walked away. So that is the exterior. A lot shorter than the exteriors of most other cars that I review because uh, it's so tiny. <laughs> One more thing to quickly highlight before we move fully into the interior is this key, a pretty standard Mazda key. What makes it unique from most other car keys is the buttons are on the side. So you'll have lock, unlock, and panic right here. Nothing crazy out of the ordinary, 
but I figured I'd mention it. Moving to the interior of the Mazda 3 Premium, it sure lives up to its name because it is very premium in here, especially this door card. I mean, look at the quality and the finish on that Bose speaker cover. That is excellent. Uh, speaking of this door card, I guess we'll start off here as I often do. You'll have a nice soft touch material up top here and down here where you would more than likely rest your arm. And then you'll have your mirror controls and your window controls right here. And above that, you'll have your lock and unlock on that speaker grill. And over here, you will have your button for the safety sense technology. You can turn that off and, off and on. And then you also have your traction control off here and your buttons for the power memory seat settings because this does have power seats. So you can do up, down, front, back, and also there is power lumbar. So that's nice to see as well. Then you'll have a little storage cubby down here. If we move down here on the steering wheel, you do have tilting and telescoping, which is nice to see. You don't often get that. I had a little Hyundai that did not have a tilting telescoping steering wheel, and that was super annoying. Moving to the steering wheel, though, you'll have your buttons for your volume, your channel changing, and then your uh, Bluetooth settings, as well as your radar-guided cruise control right here. And then if we move up to the gauge cluster, it is almost deceiving. It looks like there's just three traditional gauges right here, but the center is actually a screen. And you can adjust a few different options here, though it's not as configurable as some of the competition. So uh, you can go through to have a traditional looking speedometer, though it is digital. You can have a little bit of your driving information right there. And then you can also pull up your radar guided cruise control here. You can set the following distance um, and mess with a couple of different things. And then there's some other small settings that will appear on the screen, for example, put it in sport that will pop up there um, though I guess it is actually below the screen um, it's not actually on the screen portion itself so a little bit of customization there uh, and configurability but not a ton compared to the competition uh, the steering wheel also has paddle shifters I forgot to mention that that's pretty neat if we move over here you'll have your infotainment system now this is not a touch screen Mazda does this on almost all of their models. Um, they do not allow for touch uh, configuration right there. That's because they want it to be controlled with this little dial down here where you would probably more than likely rest your arm. That's going to spin through all the different settings. Uh, you'll have your entertainment, communication, stuff like that. And there is quick shortcut buttons right here. So if I hit home, it brings me to just the time or that. I can go music. I can tap back and I can also tap into the navigation. Now this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that is also controlled through this dial. And then you would just click to make your selection and then backs right there, almost like a mouse, uh, for example. I'm not the largest fan of it, um, but I do understand why Mazda does it. Their idea is if you are focusing on the road, you wanna make sure that you're not leaning in here to touch the screen. Um, personally, I would prefer it be a touch screen. The Mazda CX-30 does give you the option to use it as a touch screen in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I believe it's the 30, it might be the 50. It's only one of them. Very strange inclusion to only allow touch capacity for those two settings, but it does. Um, it's a decent system. And I do appreciate that there is still the inclusion of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. While we're up here, there is a very tiny um, digital heads-up display. I'm going to zoom in on that. You can see right there, just a, a digital speedometer uh, and then trip information right there. That's cool. So when you're driving, you can see that displayed in front of you. Always nice to have. And then down here, you'll have your climate controls, uh, heated seats, your front and rear defrost, your hazards right there, and then your different climate control buttons, which would all display on this little screen. But if you want to turn it off, poof, uh, most of those uh, options go away. So that's nice to clear up the dash a little bit. 
you'll have push button start, a couple of cup holders, and then here is your gear selector. Pretty traditional, I put my foot on the brake. There is a fairly standard backup camera here with guiding lines, though they do not turn with the rest of the vehicle, which is a little disappointing. Putting it back into park here and uh, coming back down here, the aforementioned sport mode is right there. So I would push that button to put it into sport and then turn it off. And then you'll have electronic parking brake, automatic hold button, and the volume for the stereo. And then if I pull this back and then pull up, that opens our armrest. And you'll have USBs in there and a 12 volt. Also, there is a little partitioner in here. So you can move that between uh, different areas to um, segregate some of the items that you have, which is a neat little idea to be able to, uh, to partition that off. And then you put the armrest down and then you pull forward um, to lock it into place. Then you'll have your glove box right here, pretty standard glove box in here, and then two climate vents uh, with a, like a third fake climate vent in the middle there um, to give the illusion of a, a continuous uh, climate dash right there. If we move up here, this is funny, I don't normally mention the dome lights in a car, but I think this is particularly silly. Um, so normally you'd get a little rocker if you want the dome lights to like come on together or you would just tap them at the same time, but Mazda has given you the option to turn one on, turn the other one on, or turn both of them on at the same time, uh, which I think is funny. And then you can see there's also a button here if you'd like to turn on the dome lights. I don't know why you wouldn't just give me the option to either A, just press both these buttons at the same time or make them push. I think that's silly, but uh, still a nice feature that it is there. It'd be weird if they would like not let you turn your dome lights on. Um, and then you'll have a sunglasses holder right here. And there is a button for the sunroof that is included on here. That's nice to have a sunroof, um, though, Unless you're a taller individual, you're not really going to get to enjoy it much. I'm 5'9", and I just barely have room to see the sunroof. Um, though, obviously, I suppose I should be paying attention to driving. Um, it's nice to have to let more light into the uh, little interior here. Personally, I really like how cozy it is. You really sink into this seat. It's very snug, and I appreciate that. Let's take a quick look at the back seats. As expected, not a ton of amenities or leg room back here in the second row, though it's nice to have a full second row. Um, nothing here on the back for climate vents, USBs, or anything like that, though I'm sure you could route a USB through here. So there is the possibility of that. Um, there is a nice fold down armrest right here with cup holders incorporated into it, and it is actually very comfortable. Um, just unfortunately though, there's just not a lot of, lot of head room or, or leg room. Again, I'm 5'9", and it is pretty cozy. I have the seat where I would have it, and uh, my legs are right up against that. So, um, not as spacious as it could be, though it is a tiny car, so you kind of have to expect that. If you're buying this to haul the entire fam, I might step up to something like a CX-30, uh, or a CX-50 uh, in the SUV range with a little bit more room in the interior. Let's take this thing for a quick spin. All right, driving the Mazda 3 Premium. I'm really excited to get this out on the road. I've always liked the look, the design of this car, and so to be able to drive one is exciting. Accelerating here a little bit, I have it in sport mode. It is pretty responsive. Um, and this braking is good here too as I slow down for a traffic light. Um, I really like how cozy it is in here. I mentioned this before. Um, I think it's a very neat little car um, and it's zippy. I like that a lot because normally I'm reviewing these gigantic pickup trucks. But the responsiveness of this car is really great, especially with the heads-up display. One thing that I didn't have when I showed the heads-up display earlier was it also shows you what the speed limit is for the road that you're currently on. That's really useful, especially if you miss the speed limit sign. You can just look right in front of you and see it on the screen. I would definitely recommend uh, taking a look at this if you're looking amongst some of the competitors uh, in this field, though I mean, a lot of people admittedly are going to small SUVs now. 
would still like that Mazda offers this. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap up my review of this Mazda 3. Really hope you enjoyed. But before I go, I'd like to mention that I am a Christian. If you have any prayer requests, I'd love to be able to pray for you. And lastly, I like to close on a weekly scriptural reading. This week's is from Proverbs 9, 10 through 12. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in understanding. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. If you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. If you scorn wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you next time.